With extreme temperatures across the globe, last month became the hottest June ever measured, breaking last year's record. And as heat waves continue into July, people in many countries are struggling to cope with the health effects, like in North America, where many cities are now experiencing unprecedented hot weather. 51 degrees Celsius and counting. People in Mexico's northern state of Baja, California, are used to soaring temperatures in the middle of the summer. But this time they exceeded the average readings by nearly 10 degrees, making new records and bringing more hardship. At my age, it's very difficult. I'm 72 years old and I've lived here for 50 years. How do you deal with the heat? Well, I spend some time in an air-conditioned room and outside. That's what we do. Climate scientists say not only the temperatures are getting higher, but also the stretches of hot days are getting longer. In Portland, in the U.S. state of Oregon, people are trying to cool down as the city sizzles with temperatures reaching 39 degrees Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit. A long-time resident says it's becoming the new norm. When we moved here, there was probably, oh, it would be really exciting and a big deal if there was like five days over 90 during the summer. So obviously these temperatures are a lot different than when we moved here. Such heat waves are increasingly reaching locations further north, where locals are unprepared. In Calgary, in Western Canada, authorities have issued a heat warning. Local NGOs are trying to help those who may be vulnerable. You can't go more than a, a few hours without, without water and heat like this and you start suffering some pretty, pretty serious health issues. Um, and that's the sort of thing we don't want anybody to have to deal with. Folks that are out, out there on the street don't have easy access, so it's really important to have it, have it available to them. It's been a similar story around the world. Experts say climate change has made heat waves more frequent on practically every continent. The World Health Organization has found that extreme temperatures cause more deaths worldwide than any other related factor. Well, frightening prospects. Let's get more on this from our science correspondent, Derek Williams. Uh, Derek, when do temperatures get deadly? Well, that's, that, that, there's not a clear-cut answer to that question because it depends very much on the person who's experiencing the heat. So the, the core temperature of the body is what, is what the body is trying to maintain, which is 37 degrees Celsius. And as it heats up, it's tr trying to get rid of excess heat. And so that might be a more difficult process, for example, if it's an older person um, who has maybe underlying conditions and, and hasn't had enough water during the course of the day, that would be more difficult than, for example, for a young person um, who's well hydrated. But um, in general, weather indexes sort of begin to say that uh, you should start to take caution at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's 26, 27 degrees Celsius, and it rapidly, though, as the temperatures rise, gets worse than 26 that. 26 to 28, is that, that low? It's, it's that low. That's when they start, start to urge caution. But, but let's just take a closer look at what can happen when the body heats up. When the weather heats up and stays that way for days or even weeks on end, it can be hard for the human body to cope. Those who work outdoors, poorer people in rural communities, and the elderly are just some of the groups at particular risk when the mercury climbs, especially when humidity is also high. The first signs of heat-related health dangers include headaches and nausea. If the body loses too much water and electrolytes through excessive sweating, it can lead to what's called heat exhaustion, marked by a drop in blood pressure, dizziness, and disorientation. If the victim isn't cooled and rehydrated, they can fall into shock and experience life-threatening heat stroke. But aside from detectable symptoms, sustained high temperatures can have more subtle effects, like incognition. Studies have shown that when external temperatures rise, oxygen levels in the blood drop, 
and the less oxygen the brain has, the less able it is to think clearly. That's exacerbated when nights are hot too. People who sleep badly are more irritable, less focused, and generally worse at remembering things. Excess heat even affects moods and mental disorders. It causes changes in levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin, for example, which is linked to anxiety, depression, and aggression. One possible explanation for why violence becomes more common during heat waves. So, punishingly high temperatures can have major impacts, not just on physical health, but mental health as well. Uh, Derek, that's uh, interesting. What, tell us about the effects on mental health. Yeah, there, in addition to these these sort of really serious physical consequences that can happen during heat waves, there's a, a wide range of studies showing that lots of mental health issues become more of an issue as the temperatures as temperatures go up, as the mercury rises. So, um, for example, there's show particularly when people are not able to sleep at night. So, cognition suffers. Stu one study in particular showed that cognition suffers dramatically in people who have not slept in air-conditioned rooms as compared to those who have slept in air-conditioned rooms. Mm -hmm. Simple cognitive tests, they perform a lot worse on those particular tests. And of course, then there's also, um, the, uh, there's behavioral changes that can occur um, uh, and m other mental disorders really see spikes in things like aggression and uh, when, when heat waves are going mm. on. Now, with global warming in mind, uh, I'd say many people, most people around the, the globe will need to adapt to a warmer climate. How is that going to work? Well, the key thing there is to always try to keep your, remember that your core temperature wants to be 37 degrees. So one thing that you can do is simple stuff, really. Stay out of the sun during the midday heat in particular. Uh, wear loose clothes. If you do have to go out into the sun, wear a hat. Make sure that you hydrate properly. Um, maybe also drink electrolyte drinks if you have access to those. Um, there are a wide range of things that you can do that can help to minimize the danger. But um, other than that, you need to make sure that you, if you particularly if you feel if you feel things like nausea or dizziness or or cramping, um, those are signs that you might uh, be heading down the road towards uh, excessive heat shock. Derek Williams, DW Science. Thank you very much, Derek.